the Pac-Man model of organellar evolution, in which an ancestral eukaryote ate a unicellular alga, giving rise to the chloroplast surrounded by a double membrane. And along comes the ancestor of these, of these parasites, which then engulfed that, eu that eukaryotic uh, uh, plant or alga, giving rise to modern-day apicomplexan parasites harboring an endosymbiotic organelle, which we know is essential, is the target for these, uh, for, uh, for these various drugs. Consistent with this model, the uh, organelle that we now know as the apicomplexan plastid, or apicoplast, is surrounded by four membranes, which we can see in these toxoplasma parasites, organelles distinct from the Golgi apparatus, the mitochondrion, the, uh, uh, the nucleus. Now, you might wonder how an organelle as striking as this could have been missed by cell biologists for all these years. And the answer, of course, is that it wasn't missed at all. This organelle had been seen many times, had been the subject of much debate, but given a variety of uninformative names, the spherical body, the Golgi adjunct, or depending on your linguistic affinity in, in France, called the organelle plurimembranaire, or in Germany, the whole cylinder. But what we can now say is that the answer to this cell biological mystery, what is this organelle, is it a distinctive organelle, is the same as the answer to our molecular biology mystery, what is this episomal DNA? And the answer to our pharmacological mystery, how is it that these drugs normally active only against bacterial species, are active against organisms such as Toxoplasma and, and, um, and Plasmodium. So the apicoplast, or apicomplexin plastid, is a novel organelle acquired by secondary endosymbiosis, harboring its own genome and essential for parasite survival. Quite an exciting finding. It's not every day that we discover a, a, a new organelle. But the big question, of course, is what does the apicoplast do?